I thank you each for your testimony. We'll now move into the question and answer portion of the hearing, and I'll begin the questioning and recognize myself for five minutes. <clears throat> Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Israel, Jordan, Korea, Mexico, Morocco, Nicaragua, Oman, Panama, Peru, Singapore, and the USMCA. Those are the countries we have free trade agreements with. What's missing from that list is the Czech Republic and Poland and a lot of other Eastern European countries that are historically been reliant upon Vladimir Putin and Russia for gas and energy in general. Also Japan, Taiwan, and others around the world that are looking to the United States to help them provide a clean, stable supply of energy to meet their growing needs and their energy security needs. I mentioned Poland, Czech Republic. In one year's time, they built a pipeline from Norway after Putin invaded Ukraine. One year, a pipeline from Norway to provide natural gas to Poland. Imagine if we could do that in the United States of America to deliver gas to our communities and to export terminals to help our friends and allies around the world. What signal does this send from the Biden administration to the world? The signal I think it sends is we don't care about your energy security. We've never manipulated natural gas or any energy source for political gain, like Vladimir Putin has by manipulating the spigot for European countries to influence political policy there. They faced a reality check when Putin invaded Ukraine. They need to meet their energy needs of their constituents, their citizens, and they've looked west to the United States of America because they've always known they could count on us to provide their needs in the energy sector when called upon. I'm going to start by entering in the record a letter opposing President Biden's LNG export ban signed by 152 Republican members of Congress. I co-authored this letter with Chair Rogers, the Speaker of the House, House leadership. This letter expresses opposition to the DOE's ban on LNG export, so without objection, so ordered. There's bipartisan outrage over President Biden's election year stunt. The President received a similar letter from House Democrats by our colleagues on this committee, and I commend them for that. As our letter states, this decision is economically and strategically dangerous and unnecessary. Under both Democrat and Republican administration, the DOE has consistently found that U.S. LNG exports serve the public interest because they contribute positive economic benefits and strengthen energy security for the American people. They also have the potential to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Mr. Rice, how does this announcement impact American energy workers, including in Pennsylvania, and what signal does this send to investors and job creators? Well, it's certainly not helpful, and it's, it's actually destructive. You know, these facilities require billions of dollars of investments um, to make happen, and any sign that there is going to be political force introduced into market forces is going to make it very difficult to invest. Um, you can look at what we're doing in our company and the impact this has uh, for our communities. You know, natural gas exports represent about 15% of the production. I think it's really important for everybody to understand this production only exists to meet market demands and exports are that market demand. So you could make an argument that of the billion dollars of royalties that we pay directly to our landowners in Ohio, West Virginia, in Pennsylvania, about 15% of those royalties are directly attributable towards meeting LNG exports. So $150 million directly going to our landowner payments. These are big deals um, to the people that we have in Pennsylvania on top of all of the jobs that we, we talk about. Thank you for that. This latest move to ban exports is part of a broader campaign to undercut American energy production. Following the announcement, Sierra Club executive director stated the Biden administration is listening to the calls to break America's reliance on dirty fossil fuels. Another example of this is the campaign by radical environmentalists to block pipelines. This especially hurts states like South Carolina, where I re represent. Our population growth is outpacing, outpacing our energy supply. We need to expand our infrastructure to deliver affordable natural gas from the Marcellus or from Louisiana and Texas. Both the Atlantic Coast and Mount Valley pipelines face these challenges, which ultimately ended up in the cancellation of the ACP. How do you view these politically driven decisions, Mr. Rice, to ban exports and ban pipelines? 
I think the biggest concern with the, the pause on the LNG export um, is, is that this is the start of the playbook um, to block American energy infrastructure. And this playbook has been used successfully to block pipelines. And that has been incredibly destructive to, and caused uh, rampantly high, unnecessarily high energy prices in America. Um, sowing doubts, concerns, fear um, has translated is the first step. Calling for unnecessary studies is the second step. Ultimately, this just leads to more delay tactics. And you can see the result of what's happened in uh, pipelines. We've blocked almost seven BCF a day's worth of pipelines that would deliver gas to places that you just mentioned. Um, and as a result, you've got bizarre situations like in Boston, they're paying $30 for their natural gas when we're producing that same natural gas in Pennsylvania for a price of $3. Uh, the only way you can explain those high prices is the lack of pipeline infrastructure. And the biggest issue that I see in this whole equation comes down to accountability. Who is accountable for these higher energy prices? When energy prices are high in Boston, guess who gets the letter from senators about the high energy prices? I do. Not the person that was responsible for blocking that pipeline infrastructure. So um, I think one of the important elements here that we need to bring in is we need to bring more accountability on, on these decisions that are being made. Thank you for that. My time's expired. I will have some additional questions we'll submit for you guys to answer. I now recognize uh, the ranking member, Mr. Gett, five minutes.